Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha Television. I am Akhilesh Suman and I am here in Palestine. Prime Minister Narendra Modi as first ever Prime Minister of India to visit Palestine. He had recently been in Palestine and he met all the political leaders of Palestine including Palestinian Authority leadership. Uh, Excellency, you are Mr. Nasir al Quda. You are the Central Committee member of Fatah and you had been foreign minister of uh, uh, this Palestinian Authority also. You had also been permanent representative of Palestine in UNO, UNO. So when Prime Minister Narendra Modi comes here, he comes here as the first ever Prime Minister of India to visit Palestine. How does it make difference to the Palestinian cause? Listen, first of all, let me say that I'm very happy to have you personally here. And of course, to have you as part of this important Indian delegation headed by the Prime Minister. For the Palestinian people, the relationship with India goes long time ago. Beginning with Mahatma Gandhi as the icon of uh, struggle right. for national independence. Right. And as the person who uh, uh, founded the, the peaceful, peaceful struggle against, against occupation and against oppression. Uh, he, he was, of course, distinguished and uh, uh, Palestinian people remember his position in support of their struggle. Now, everyone knows the, that how Palestine was close to the heart of India and yes, Indians yes. who were part of the independence movement. But no, nobody could come here, nobody could come Palestine for whatever reasons. But when Prime Minister Nayad Modi comes here, how does it make, how happy you are, or it is just a routine affair? No, no, it's not a routine. It's very special and it's very important and we value this very much. It didn't happen before for many reasons, including the occupation itself, including the fact that the situation was different. But Palestinian leaders, especially Yasser Arafat, who I believe held India deep in his heart, right. and I, I think right. Indians generally also uh, yeah, love them. They, they love Yasser exactly. Arafat. Exactly. Yeah. And of course now President Abbas consistently went to India and consistently participated in building this special relationship between the two sides. And now comes the Prime Minister, which is, as I said, very important, very special. We hope that this will take us even further ahead in our bilateral relations. It will actually make the Indian positions in support of the Palestinian people stronger. Yes, Prime Minister Nayan Modi very clearly said that he hopes that he will get independence and sovereign Palestine. But he also mentioned that uh, we want that there should be peaceful movement for Palestine. So do you think that uh, uh, you are on the way of peaceful movement? We are in the peaceful movement. I think, you know, uh, we, 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 we don't hide at the uh, peak of the revolution. It was armed struggle. And, and we fought the Israelis in many, in many fronts. Uh, at a later stage, uh, uh, the political program has changed and we called for the establishment of the Palestinian state on 1967 borders. Right. We called for a peaceful solution for Israel and Palestine living side by side. And since then, of course, the Palestinian struggle has been, has been peaceful in, in general as but, a whole. But do you mean to say that violence has come down? Relatively speaking, violence has come down for sure. It's a much lower intensity. Unfortunately, there is some kind of con continuity, relative continuity of this low intensity kind of violence, which is the result of basically Israeli policies, especially settler colonialism gone down, does it yes. mean that uh, uh, Israelis have also reduced the oppression against Palestinians? It means that the uh, Palestinian factions and the Palestinian Authority is trying harder to convince the Palestinian people of the necessity to go that road so that we can achieve our rights, our independence with least cost for us as well as for the Israelis. Oh, as well as for Israelis. As well as for the Israelis, but yes. But off and Israelis. on we hear that there is stone pelting, the children are coming out on roads and they are pelting stones on police, on whatever army, and then there is firing, cross-firing. So how it is happening? Are you telling people to a stone pelting? 
we are not telling people anything, you know, and that makes me even angry when somebody speaks of, uh, uh, of, of parties pushing the people. Why? Okay. Why it makes me angry? Because yeah. Palestinian people are a human being when yeah. they are subjected to this kind of colonization, of oppression. Their land is taken away, right. settlers come instead, uh, walls are built to isolate them. Where else in the world you have all the whole cities encircled by a wall? Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ. Okay. is encircled with a wall. Okay, right. Gated wall. Yeah. Where else? I mean, how can anybody take this? So actually, if we are doing anything, we are doing very serious efforts, positive efforts, to convince people, in spite of all this, not to go the violent road. That's a very good thing from your part. But what is the response of Israeli government? Have they reduced violence? Have they reduced oppression against Palestinians? You know, the main, the main point is this. The Israeli trend, general trend, unfortunately, including this government, now want to take over the whole land. They want to take the Palestinian land. And that is the crux of the problem. And that what we hope will come to an end if the international community does its, its work and if they take positions strong enough to convince the Israelis that this is not acceptable. And they have to accept coexistence and have to accept the presence of the state of Palestine. But after Mr. Trump, the American president, uh, announced that he will shift the, his embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and he almost declared that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. So do you think that the old structure that was negotiating between uh, Israel and Palestine is going to exist or is going to be effective? Uh, actually, Mr. Trump, by his decision, actually undermined, undermined peace efforts. Nevertheless, it's not the end of it, hopefully, because we hope that all parties, other parties will come instead of, in addition to the American presence, and push the whole situation uh, in, the right, in the right direction. He's also telling that he will reduce the grant that he was going, giving to Palestinians if we're not going to accept what he has done. So do you think that this is a new situation and you have to confront a new situation Listen, now? Listen, the United States is a big country. And, and uh, we are not taking this lightly. Okay. Nevertheless, okay. it is the Palestinian people who decides their fate okay. and who decides their capital. Okay. It's not President Trump. Okay. But President Trump has declared the whole world came in your favor. In the UN voting, whole world came in your favor. In favor of the right thing. The right thing. Yes. Right thing. If it comes in your favor, then what is the new initiative that you are going to take now? Exactly. Because India is supporting your, uh, uh, supported uh, whatever you wanted on this issue. China supported, Russia yes. supports. So, yes. so, so what is the new initiative that you are going to take? Anyway, I hope also India you, you, is, is, is involved and is included. Yeah. We are now calling for a new mechanism, new international mechanism. Right. To take care of the peace process, to uh, uh, nurture the peace process, and to push the two sides in the right direction for a successful negotiations and successful end, successful uh, peace treaty, hopefully. So who are you telling peace. for this new mechanism? I'm hearing this new mechanism. Your ambassador in India also told me that yes. India should be part of the new me mechanism. Mm -hmm. You are also telling, Muhammad Abbas was telling when he made Prime Minister Narendra Modi, but what this new mechanism you're all about? What is the concept of this new mechanism? Well, the, the, concept, the concept is simple. It's multilateralism. I mean, monopoly over this by the United States was wrong idea, okay. and in any case now has to come to an end. Okay. We don't, of course, choose who must be there because we are not the decisive, decisive element here, or not, we but, are not but, the but, only one. But, but, but we are pushing for as wide participation as possible. So we who are, will take the lead in this to create a new mechanism? You want United Nations? You, you want to persuade yourself that create a new mechanism for yourself? But what, what, what is the concept? What do you want? For, how, what type of mechanism you want to make? You know, the normal, the usual one. For okay. instance, the participation of the five permanent members of the Security Council, the participation of interested, important countries. Okay. And here comes to, to, to thought, of course, a country like, uh, like India. 
Okay. Uh, maybe some Arab countries, small okay. number of Arab countries. Okay. But a broad mechanism can actually put a reasonable basis right. that we all know what okay. kind of basis is needed to okay. put a basis for uh, uh, negotiations right. and supervise, help, sponsor this negotiations until it's successful end. So did you talk to anyone about this new mechanism? Of course, we took with, with everybody. I mean, we took with the prime minister when 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 he was when he was here. Okay. We we uh, uh, talked with the Russians. We uh, talked with with the Europeans, with uh, President Macron, with uh, the German leadership. The, the foreign minister was here. We don't stop talking about about uh, this initiative, about this mechanism, and about other other uh, uh, political consideration as well. So what do you think India can do now for you? A lot. Uh, to continue providing us with support uh, in international arena. Okay. Uh, to continue pushing for a peaceful settlement. Okay. To continue pushing, hopefully if convinced, for this new mechanism as we are talking about and maybe even being ready to, uh, uh, to participate, to give, it, uh, to give it a hand, and of course to continue to provide us with uh, uh, economic assistance as much as possible within the Indian means. Okay, so now when Prime Minister Nand Modi had visited here recently, what was the impact on the people you could go out, that people also were feeling something? Absolutely. You know, as I told you uh, at the beginning, I mean, India means a lot for average Palestinians. If you are Palestinians really? in the street, that uh, the Indian leader was here, they, they, you will feel, I think, that, that they, are, they are happy. They are happy. They are happy because there is, there is this historic, serious and real bond of affection and of friendship. But, uh, uh, Mr. Nasir, you had uh, been foreign minister, you had been UN representative. Now that it seems that UN and the whole world he is sympathetic to your cause, so how do you think that the equations that China and Russia is having, uh, it's like a, a different pole it is creating. Mm. So is it going to affect you in favor or is it affecting this uh, polarization of parties like uh, America, Israel one side, yeah. China, Russia other side? Yes, as, as you said, of course, uh, the whole world uh, more or less support the Palestinian cause. Yeah. Nevertheless, you have on the other hand, yeah. The United States adamantly in, in, in the other in the other corner. We we try to, to talk with them, we try to have some serious debates. We don't want that polarization that you refer to. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, of course, we want to maintain our friendships with important countries that have supported us hmm. during the uh, uh, last uh, period of time, for years. Uh, support that we value, including the support by China, for instance, the support uh, by Russia. We, we will work hard to keep this friendship and this support and we, we trust that it will indeed continue. But tell me one thing, that uh, Israeli government is there, they are controlling the borders. Palestinian Authority is not a government like a sovereign government. So in day-to-day -day working, there might be some sort of coordination. Is it there any coordination between government and Palestinian there, authority? There is, there is some coordination. It's at, at the minimum, uh, unfortunately. Why? Because the agreement we signed originally was for the creation of self-governing authority for the period of five years, yeah. during which negotiations will take place on final status issues leading to Palestinian independence. Right. Unfortunately, they don't, did not comply. Not right. only that. I can give you uh, some important, important uh, uh, information. Number of settlers since the beginning of the peace process, since the signing of agreement between the Palestinians and, and Israelis, has doubled. Double inside the Palestinian area? Inside the Palestinian area. It has doubled with all the ramification of this fact. So, so this land is uh, continuous. So why do you object when Israelis come and settle here? Because they come as colonizers, because they come to build illegal settlements on confiscated land, because they uh, have separate, separate uh, structure of life, because they oppress the Palestinian side. After, after independence, as part of good neighborly relationship, of course there will be no problem.
hmm. with, with Israelis coming here and with Palestinians going there. So if, hmm. if there is some settlement, if some Israelis are coming, they secure themselves inside the Bab, so, so how it creates problem for you? As I told you, because the, the land they are on is Palestinian land, it is confiscated. It is someone private land? Some of it private land, some of it public land, but all is Palestinian land. By the way, Palestinian refugees that were uprooted in 1948 yeah. own privately owned 5.5 million dunum in Israel. They are still there? No, the people are outside, but the land is there, 5.5 It is in whose control? That land? Israeli control. Israelis have taken away that yeah. land. No. Not only we are not discussing this, but now the Israelis have come to the West Bank, okay. to the remaining, the remainder of the Palestinian land, trying to colonize it and confiscate it, build illegal settlements that are prohibited under international law, Okay. in spite of many Security Council resolutions and UN resolutions, and give arms to those and oppress the Palestinian people. Do you give any petition against this to Palestinian government or Palestinian uh, uh, Israeli government or Israeli of course, court? Of course, non-stop, non-stop to the Israeli court, though personally I'm not that enthusiastic about the methods. But of course, we go to the United Nations all the time. We go to the International Court of Justice. We now are trying to go to the International Criminal Court, etc., etc. In all these ways, could you and did you try any time to talk seriously to the Israeli government, Israeli parties? Absolutely, absolutely. But let me. Tell whom you did this. you? Whom did you talk? But let me tell you this: the most important. No, whom did most, you talk? The most serious. Yes. The most serious peace talks did happen between. Uh, Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat and Israeli leader Ishaq Rabin. Okay. Of course, Ishaq Rabin was assassinated okay. by an Israeli. Okay. By an Israeli, meaning an Israeli establishment, basically. Okay. And Yasser Arafat, we believe, also was assassinated by the uh, Israeli side. After that, it was much more difficult. Nevertheless, we did have very important rounds of negotiations. For instance, with Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Ormert, with even Mr. Netanyahu, and even also with Mr. Sharon. The result was not encouraging. Oh, what was the result at that point of time? Which, which way you reached? Not much, because however we beat around the bush, however we try to avoid the issue, the real issue is the Israeli wish, the Israeli decision to try to take over the Palestinian land. All the Palestinian lands they want to take? Practically, if not all, most of it. How Palestinian people are living under this uh, independence struggle or notion that we will get independence someday? Absolutely. I mean, the Palestinian people generally are resilient people. Hmm. They are not living exactly the same everywhere. For instance, in Gaza, the situation is really miserable. Hmm. Here, in some places in the West Bank, the situation also is very bad. In some areas, situation are better. For instance, here in Ramallah, since yeah. this is the uh, uh, the location of the government, and and uh, since there is a lot of international assistance and a lot of Palestinian economic uh, uh, economic activities, so slightly people people are are better here in 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 a place like in the uh, West Bank area, especially in in Ramallah, Ramallah and, area, and, Ramallah and area. some other yeah. in some other places. At the end of the day, even this relatively good situation is not is not sustainable because with the with the existence of of occupation with the existence of settler colonialism uh, with the continuous suffocation uh, by the israelis of the palestinian life including the economic activities failure is 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 certain and there has been many failures uh, before actually at some point the israeli army invaded the whole west bank and destroyed the Palestinian authorities, including security apparatus. And then uh, after uh, President Abbas took what, over, what we What becomes the provocation from? that Israeli army comes anywhere and they destroy things? Uh, you, you can say that. At, at some point, unfortunately, I, can, I have to, to admit, at some point there was uh, a deplorable uh, phenomenon, that is the suicide bombings that took place. From, from Palestinian from side? From Palestinian side. Uh, listen, out of desperation, out of, of frustration, out of loss of hope, you have desperate, uh, you have desperate acts like 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 this. So this is not the original sin. This is not the original problem. Although 
we we all we know how serious how serious it it uh, it was had there been any tall leader or had there been any strategy in our mind so that you can also tell those people and especially there are young people children are there who are get, going into jail so yes. that uh, they can stop such things very 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 important and that's that's one of the reasons why we have been talking for years now about the popular resistance about the peaceful peaceful resistance given the uh, valuable experiences right. of the past especially the experience of uh, mahatma gandhi okay but again it's very difficult okay. it's very difficult because uh, what the israelis have been doing to the palestinian people is much worse unfortunately than then. what the british did to the indians or let's say the apartheid regime did to uh, the south africans i mean these these are our comrades who come here and from time to time and they say listen it's not even similar but sir tell me one thing israel is a country which is uh, uh, in a way appreciated everywhere in the world that it is technologically very advanced and it has reached a height when they can compete in technology and development with uh, most developed countries in the world so do you take any lesson whatever power little power do you have under the palestinian authority to take that experience and you can also compete with israelis in that way yeah well yes i, I think we we have been uh, trying to do that in spite of all the difficulties let me tell you nevertheless i mean i i accept that that israelis and and maybe also uh, non israeli jews around the world are smart people and they 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 made lots of, of yeah. progress there right. is no doubt about that for, for for years but there is also the unlimited financial economic technological military support coming from the united states of america i mean in a huge amounts and amounts that one cannot even cannot even imagine and that definitely uh, that definitely helped now palestinian people i i was trying to tell you are are resilient are trying the maybe others would have died by now would have disappeared we haven't disappeared we insist on achieving our rights and on living on raising our kids on educating them and making them better equipped to face the future so yes we are trying i've been moving in various areas in west bank also mm. went to village mm. i was trying to find out mm. poverty i was trying to find out very poor people unhealthy people but whatever uh, occupation is there you say but i found people are healthy the found people are cheerful and they have good houses so so how your economy is running uh yes in 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 some places you would you would unfortunately still find some some poverty in in the real in the real time i could not see any, i could not see particularly any particularly in gaza Okay, in Gaza. particularly in Gaza. Yeah. Generally here the situation is is better and that is and that is good because people have been working. They do they do work and they try to uh, make uh, make a living and they try to uh, create better economy. Uh, the economic relationship between the Palestinians and the Israelis is governed by something called Paris Protocol. Okay, you have a trade relation with Israel. Yes, but, but which is Israel is your largest trading partner? Yes, 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 because of the de facto situation. Okay, I mean, whether we like it or not, they are here. I mean, okay, are even here. when you are the largest trading partner as Israel, consumption market uh, also. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. and a very good market also. But still, this relationship is not going in a better way. It is not, unfortunately, going in a better way for simple reasons because. Uh, however you try to separate economy from politics mm. uh, at the end of the day you cannot separate them completely but 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 economy for them is okay you are doing good business with israelis israelis are getting their market in palestinians but your politics is not being guided by that cooperation yeah well from yeah. their point of view yeah. if they keep you as a consuming market yeah if they keep keep you as 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 a recipient only uh -huh. preventing you from developing your own economy and you becoming a real partner or you 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 become a competitor that is forbidden okay and of course we want we want to do do that but for you to do that you need a a a different political platform you need to have different legal platform you need to be a state we need to have your independence you need to end the israeli control over our our lives now if you want to import anything they have to agree 
if you want to uh, develop uh, our our uh, our station uh, our radio station we need a license and that has to go to the israeli security it, it, it's terrible terrible long list of of detailed obstacles and 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 things that very difficult to, to uh, uh, excellency we are coming towards the end of this interview can you in any way accept Israelis and Palestinians can coexist in single nation without any uh, ghettoization anywhere? Actually, at the end of 1960s, we did propose one secular democratic state. Oh, right? Yes. Yeah. And that was rejected adamantly by the Israelis because simply they uphold the idea of having their own uh, national, uh, Jewish national homeland for Jews only. Okay. Okay, so we came up with another historic compromise whereby we accepted the establishment of our state on 22% of historic Palestine, less than one quarter. Half of what was given to the Arab side in 1947 partition resolution, 181. Okay. And still they come here and colonize this land, attempting to take over big chunks of this as they did with the wall, for instance, that okay. you saw okay. for yourself. Okay. What is the least benchmark that you can give to Israelis to come on a common issue? We are ready to give recognition. We are ready to give peaceful relationship. We are ready to open the door for normalization of relations with the Arab uh, region and, and beyond. We are ready for good neighborly relationship, including in the economic field. In return, we simply want our right to self-determination and national independence on 1967 borders. Okay. And about capital, can you negotiate on the question of capital? Because you are developing Ramallah in a way that is becoming a very good city. Can yes. you negotiate the capital in Ramallah? Yes, Half of the history of this region was written as a result of things related to Jerusalem. Okay. Wars and wars again and annexation and counter-annexation, all kinds of bloodshed okay. as a result of, of this city. And the lesson that we all have to learn from history, that this city does not accept monopoly. It cannot be a Jewish city only, it cannot be a Muslim city only. So you want it cannot a, be a Christian city. You only. want a dividing wall in Jerusalem? That no, one we don't part want walls. We didn't build walls, they did. The last thing we want is to see walls. We want an open city. We want how can, two, as the two countries, how can two countries have capital in the same city? Because we, both of them will know where is the line, even if it is not physically, physically divided. Okay. And each of them will have their democratic institutions and their elections, municipality and otherwise. We could have joint structures to run the city. But it is city. imaginary, it is hypothetical. It, it never happens in two nations that one city can be capital of two countries. There is always first. Beside, isn't it better than dividing the city? If anybody would suggest the division is better, we'll take it. So there is but always we are open-minded. So there is always first, and we will see that what first comes from which Palestine or Israeli, but still the situation is awaiting a good solution, the best solution possible between Israel and Palestine. And India will be most interested to see the situation. Akhile Suman for Raj Sabha Television with camera person Junaid in Ramallah. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, thank you. Sir. And good to have you here. Thank you.